This video is sponsored by Monday.com, which is a centralized platform for managing every detail of your work, from high-level roadmap planning to the specifics of day-to-day -day tasks while building a culture of transparency. It's fantastic for developers and just about any other type of professional. The platform is suitable for individuals and teams of all sizes, from a couple freelancers to thousands collaborating across the globe. To learn more about Monday.com and what it can offer your business, click the link in the description below. Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video, I want to talk about something that we all struggle with. It doesn't matter what type of developer you are, what skill level, what language. Being productive is something that we've all struggled with, at least at some point in our careers. And I've addressed this a few times, but I wanted to come up with some solid tips to be more productive. And one thing I, I don't like about making these types of videos is I don't want to come off as a know-it-all because that's far from the truth. The truth is every single one of these tips are from my own struggles and things I've done to try to work on them. Um, it's also true that I have a long way to go and I still get off track, but overall these things have helped my productivity and made me more successful in both development and content creation. So the first tip is to be less random and there's a lot of ways to put this you could say manage your time better be more organized but for me I used to have a very random work day where I just take things as they come and this applies especially to people who either work from home or have a lot of freedom in their work day okay even if you work for a company if if the way that your company runs they they give you freedom to pretty much do what you want then it's up to you to structure your work day correctly okay it does take a lot of self-control but it pays off off to be consistent um, you know even from the moment you wake up so for me I wake up around 5:30 or 6 I mess around on YouTube and social media for an hour take my daughter to school at around 7:10 or so come back and then work starts okay so that's very consistent so you want to start work at the same time every day same with breaks try and take breaks at the same time every day get down a routine um, I used to take an hour break to go to the gym sometimes at 11 sometimes at 2 sometimes I'd wait till after work now it's 1230 every day go at 1230 try to get back at 130 and continue work okay so you'll find when you have structured days and you stop being random uh, in your workflow you'll be much more productive Okay, so this brings us to the next one, which is stop wasting time. And I'm mostly talking about wasting time on websites like social media, um, you know, checking analytics, things like that, news. The reason I do all my social media and stat checking and stuff in the morning before I start work is to get it out of the way. Um, we all have websites that we're basically addicted to, and it could be, like I said, social media, either prefer professional or personal. Maybe you're big into sports or politics, and you're constantly checking news sites. One of my big things as a content creator is analytics. I used to go and check, for instance, my YouTube analytics every hour. Uh, I'd stop what I'm doing, and I'd go and see how many views I got, subscribers or whatever. And not only was that wasting time, but it, it, it was bringing me out of the zone when I was actually coding and creating projects. And taking breaks is important, but they should be planned breaks, not just spur the sporadic need to check Facebook or Twitter. And you definitely want to turn off notifications. If you're in the middle of programming or doing something that requires your full attention and you get these desktop notifications, maybe someone responded to a tweet or something like that, it can really throw you off. So I would suggest at least turning them off for the workday. Um, and if you find it hard stopping to stopping going to Twitter or Facebook or whatever it, your thing is, if you find it that hard, there's actually apps and extensions that can help you with that. So it'll actually block you from going to those sites at certain times. So uh, I haven't used any of these programs, but I know people that have and, they, and that they've worked for. All right, so the next tip is to have a well-planned project structure. And if you work for a company that already has a strict workflow, then you already have it mapped out for you. Scrum is pretty popular in companies when you're dealing with, you know, large projects with multiple developers. So just make sure you follow it. If you're planning your own projects, then you want to have some kind of template or framework or checklist that you follow from all the way through from gathering materials to deployment and maintenance. And this is hard when you first get started. Back when I was freelancing, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. There was no really no rhyme or reason to the way I did things. But over time, I developed a checklist and a boilerplate for how I handled each project. And obviously, all projects are different. You might have a, a small project where you're doing some contract work, maybe adding a feature to an application or a website or something. And then you may have a, you know, 
an entire e-commerce platform from start to finish. So obviously those two projects are much different. So you might end up with a few different checklists or a few different templates for different projects. Um, also, I'd suggest chunking your work into small tasks. So instead of having a task like, let's say, create REST API, you want to look at what models and database resources you're going to create, what routes, uh, will you be writing tests? Create REST API shouldn't be a task, it should be a category of tasks. So you want, really want to break things up. Uh, another thing to look into is automation. So things like bug tracking and deployment. There's a lot of services out there that can help automate that stuff. Okay, so anything that can just increase your productivity and make things move along faster. Okay, so in order to keep track of your tasks and projects, you should use some kind of project management tool. Monday.com is sponsoring this video, which is an excellent platform, kind of a shameless plug there, but there's, there's literally hundreds of choices. And you may have some that you've already worked with. You may have to try a couple different tools out to kind of compare and contrast. I personally like tools that are simple, that are browser-based. But there's there's so many out there and that they have standalone web apps, browser extensions, desktop apps, uh, mobile apps. And then sometimes you have services that have a combination of these. So whatever you do, don't try to keep everything in your head and don't just use client or, or, or team emails as your project management system. I did this for a while when I started out and it was extremely unorganized and unproductive. Instead of having to go back and check your emails, immediately put the task or the feedback, whatever it is, into your project management system for easy reference. Um, so just do some searching, find a tool that works for you uh, if you haven't already. And, you know, if you work with a team, make sure that it has good collaboration features. So the next tip is to code faster. In my last video, we created some custom snippets in the Visual Studio Code text editor. Now snippets allow you to not have to keep writing the same code over and over. And this is one example of what you can do to code faster. Um, keyboard shortcuts are also huge, whether you use Visual Studio Code or some other text editor or IDE, try and learn the keyboard shortcuts. It's going to take time and practice to learn them, but once you, you actually learn them, it's going to increase your speed dramatically. Um, so you definitely want to look into that. A lot of us can't type very fast. I'm not incredibly slow, but I'm also not a very fast typer. So using things like snippets and shortcuts really helps. Um, another thing you may want to do is actually work on your type speed. One thing that I would suggest is Z-Type, which is a really fun game where you actually shoot down spaceships and stuff like that. Um, it's something that, that I've used to try and increase my type speed. It's also really fun. Um, also, you can use tools to speed things up like Emmet, which is used for HTML and CSS. Um, so you don't have to type out you know, the full HTML beginning and end tag and your, all your styles and stuff like that. So just look for tools like that to increase your code speed. Um, even things like bug trackers, testing frameworks, browser extensions. These are all things that will increase productivity and, and help you write, not just write code faster, but create your projects faster. So the next one is don't work too much and take breaks. And I know this might sound a little counterintuitive saying don't work too much. Uh, because this is this is about productivity. However, I think coding is kind of like working out at the gym. If you work out for an hour, that's great. It, you build muscle. But if you go much longer than that, your body starts to get overtrained and it actually has the opposite effect. So I think that the same is true with your brain. If you overtrain it, you're going to get worn down, burnt out. And not only that, you're also going to lose your focus. You're going to lose ambition. You're going to lose your drive for, for coding. Um, nothing's worse than sitting down and just dreading your work. So you want to keep that drive and passion for what you do. So try not to overwork yourself. This also includes taking breaks. And I've said this in many other videos when I'm stuck on something for hours and I take a break and come back. That's when I usually figure it out because I was able to, to clear my head for a little bit, um, come back refreshed, and then the solution is clear to me. Um, again, though, you want to try to stay consistent with break times. So as far as how often you take breaks, I mean, that differs for everyone. I know people that take breaks every 25 minutes. I also know people that don't take any breaks at all, which I definitely wouldn't recommend. What I do is I try to take a five to 10 minute break every two hours or so. And then about halfway through the day, I'll take an hour break. All right. So I mean, that's that's what I do. But you need to find what suits you best. 
So the next one is to minimize distractions. And sometimes this is out of your control because, you know, you may work in an office with coworkers or you may work from home where your family is. I've done both. And, and I would say that home is definitely the bigger challenge, especially if you have kids. Um, at a company, usually coworkers are pretty respectful and they, they have their own stuff to do. However, if you're at home, you should establish boundaries with your family. And trust me, I know that's not always easy. Um, but let your significant other know that you, you need your work time to be your work time. You may have to say it over and over. It may even cause some conflict. But it's important that you have peace and quiet in your environment if you're a developer. Um, or at least peace. I know some people like to listen to music while they code, which seems crazy to me because I need it absolutely silent, but everyone's different. So just try and create, um, you know, a peaceful work atmosphere for yourself, whatever that may entail. All right. So the last tip is to always be learning. And it's easy to fall out of the habit of learning new things uh, once you get a job as a developer or once you start working. You get complacent with the technologies you're using at work. However, in my experience, if you stop learning new things, your, your passion kind of goes out the window. And if that happens, your work suffers. So I always suggest having some kind of side project that is out of the scope of your daily work and technologies. And I know earlier I said don't work too much. So it's kind of a weird balance to be able to learn new stuff but also not overwork yourself i do think coding for work is more stressful on your mind than coding for fun or to learn there's much more responsibility so i think it's possible to do maybe an hour or so of your own stuff every day stuff that you enjoy that feels more like a hobby than a job um, for some reason once we start getting paid for something we love to do and it becomes a job, it becomes less desirable. Um, I know that's true for myself and, and many others. And another thing you might want to do is look for pockets of time that you can take advantage of to learn new things. So one example is driving in the car, whether it's a commute to work or if you have a long drive somewhere else, maybe listen to an audible book, a uh, podcast, something like that. Uh, also, if you go to the gym and you walk on the treadmill, instead of listening to music, maybe watch a tutorial or a course and, and you can learn that way. So you're doing something um, that you would do anyways, which is go to the gym or go for a drive, plus you're learning. So look for things like that. that that's really helped me out. All right, guys, so I think that's going to do it. Hopefully you found some of this stuff useful and really try to put some of it into play. I know it's hard to, to change, but you really see the benefit of being more organized and productive. It's ultimately going to make you much more successful. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please leave a like and I'll see you next time.